Welcome to the Dr. G Show. I'm Dr. G. So here's I'm my new Susan. line. Yep. Okay, go. I'm the bad boy wellness. I'm the doctor that your doctor warned you about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get on. Patrick Garrett is live now, so I'm gonna get on. Oh, not okay. So you need to check on. So welcome you guys to the Dr. G Show. This is episode 173. Um, last time we talked about five things that keep you chronically sick and dying prematurely. And the first thing that we went over was basically that we created these epidemics from scratch. So the fact that everybody ends up with all these diseases, they don't know that these diseases go like that. Not slow over time, but boom, right? I was looking with a patient today on MS. And MS literally goes from 1880 to 1980 and then boom, like straight up, like almost totally vertical, right? Yep. And if you look at a short one, so like from 1980 to say uh, 2010, it kind of just does this. It starts at zero and it goes up like that. So it looks bad. Mm -hmm. But if you go all the way back, it is like poof, straight up. It's crazy. It is. So we know. Just from the 1980s. Right. I mean, you would think, oh, it's going to be a hundred years or so, but no. Yeah. No. So all the diseases that we have are not diseases. They are normal expected outcomes from abnormal lifestyle. You can only eat and drink petroleum products before you end up falling apart. So today we want to talk about the probably most extreme version of this. So we talked about how our food causes all these problems. But one of the things, one of the five things is most Americans don't know that their food is banned in most countries, which is what you were talking about just mm -hmm. a few minutes ago. Mm -hmm. um, and as you guys know, our special guest is uh, Suzanne Blockett. Yeah. Right? There you go. You got it. I'm always teasing her. So, <laughs> Suzanne Blockett. <laughs> I played basketball in high school. So, Block it. That's what my coaches used did to they say. Make, did they? you use that in the right context? Uh, well, you know, this is a married name. Oh. So What's I the non-married name? Conkle. Suzanne Conkle! <laughs> it's not the same. What the hell's Conkle mean? It's more like conk was my conk. basketball. One who conks. <laughs> yeah. Who's going to get the conk? Suzanne! <laughs> conkle! <laughs> you know, I went to Belize and they had conkle, oh, uh, conk, uh, ceviche and all kinds of stuff. and Conch. Conch? Yeah, conch. Yeah, I think it's conch. And they were all sold out. It was totally bullcrap. The whole, it wasn't seasoned. So it's like this cool little thing I could get and it's, uh, so fine. And, and just now. So I had a shark, so. Well, there you go. All right. Hey, and last week we, d we, we had the uh -oh. microphone out and so we were tapping our pins and we didn't realize how loud it was. So we're going to try not to do that today. I'm going to do it all the time. <laughs> okay. Because I am... Bad boy. All right. So, um, glad you guys are joining. Please make sure to share this. Uh, we're going to do um, a giveaway. So, so Suzanne said that that might be a good idea. So, uh, we're going to have everybody share this. And then we're going to pick one person out of a hat. Uh, we're going to write all the names down, put it in a hat, and then they're going to get a free office visit. And if you're out of state, we'll do it through telemedicine. Mm -hmm. But you can have this review, have me review your supplements, review labs with you, or have a real appointment, whatever you want to do. But that'll save you some money. Yeah. And we really appreciate you that's, guys. I mean, we've been doing this for five years, and uh, I'm always awesome. thankful that anybody shows up and listens to me ramble on and make bad jokes. <laughs> so. Yeah. All right. So I'm we're just laughing at the ramble part, not the bad joke yeah. part. So Suzanne uh, is going to keep us on track here too. Okay. So, in 2006, the American diet became the leading cause of preventable death over smoking. It is now better to smoke cigarettes than to eat like an American. So that's why well, wow. I was just like, I saw my kids smoking a cigarette and eating a pot pie, and I was just like, hey, that pot pie is going to kill you, girl. You did not. <laughs> no. <laughs> So that's what I'm like, people get all judgy, right? So that years ago, uh, I think Time Newsweek maybe, came mm -hmm. out with a, a french fry in an ashtray and it said, uh, fries are the new cigarettes or something like that. 
So, you know, we're all cool with shaming everybody for smoking, but that's why we're eating Doritos and nachos and stuff. So that's pretty messed up. That it tells is. you a lot about what's going on. But there's these little signs that you have. And actually, it's not up there anymore. I always tell this story, but it's not there anymore. All right, so these are the signs you'll see. So basically, in other countries, and even in the U.S., you'll see signs. Tell me if you guys have seen these. But they will say, don't feed the animals your processed food because it suppresses your immune system and you will kill them, right? The stuff you eat, the stuff you feed your kid, will kill these animals. And we care a lot about these animals. So feed your kids it, but not the animals. The animal. right. Because we don't want the deer to die. So, yeah, and I walk every day. And I see people feeding squirrels. There's an Are albino squirrel. Are you bragging because I broke my toe? Are you rubbing <laughs> that in? No. <laughs> so, right. so I there's an I an albino squirrel in Sedgwick County Park. Really? Right? Yeah. And people feed yeah. the squirrels over there, and they come running up to you, and they're like crazy. Do you call them cracker? Mm. -mm. Little crackers. Like, What's up, cracker? You gotta feed the cracker, the cracker squirrel. <laughs> crackers to the cracker squirrel. Yeah, right? no, see. You gotta catch I think that thing. You can sell most it. of the time I see that they're feeding them uh, peanuts. Right. Oh, peanuts are good. Okay. Well, so, unless they're roasted, salted, or something. But what if the squirrels like roasted nuts? They're always eating raw nuts. I don't know. I don't know. So. It's hot in here. That's a song. <laughs> we were saying that earlier because it's been hot in here. I'll so, just fix it right now. With, um, keep going. So with those signs, I years ago, uh, I love going to the Wichita Mountains. And I love rock climbing, caving, hiking, all that kind of stuff. And rappelling. And they had this sign. That, so out at uh, Wichita Mountains, they have a prairie dog village. They used to have this sign up. And I noticed it's not there anymore. I think it just says don't feed them. But uh, it used to say do not feed the prairie dogs, your processed food, it suppresses their immune system and they would die. So I was sitting there looking at the prairie dogs, this uh, dad and son was sitting there uh, with the prairie dogs, the son was taking his sandwich and pulling bread off and throwing it to the prairie dogs. Mm -hmm. And so uh, his dad says, hey Bobby, don't be doing that, and he pointed at the sign, and the son was like, oh I'm sorry dad, and started eating the sandwich. And I just started laughing my ass off because they didn't realize that they care more about prairie dogs than their son. That's crazy. Yeah. It's absolutely crazy that we don't put those pieces together like that. So you'll see on the river walks, it says don't feed the ducks the bread. Uh, you'll see um, that sign that I showed you, it basically has a dead deer and a bunch of dead animals. It's like don't feed your food to the wild animals. At the zoo, you can't feed your food to the animals. Mm -hmm. The stuff the zoo sells you to eat for you and your kids is not allowed to be fed to the animals. <laughs> that should that should tell you something. It should. Right? Right. That's right. so crazy. All right. Maybe if they could just redo the signs where it said don't feed yourself or the animals bread yeah. or whatever. Yeah. If you if, if you don't feed it to the <laughs> duck, don't feed it to your kids. So and it's hard because, again, one of the things that we'll talk about next time is food as pornography, food as addiction, food as emotions, food as coping, right? Yes. Yeah. Can I do, can I do the, uh, the right. sugar addiction? Hell yeah. Okay, you want to do that? No, that's next time. Oh. Okay, we'll do oh, sugar. Oh. Yeah. Well, let's, uh, we can Go do that. ahead. Go you ahead and finish that? and I'll, I'll pull it up while you're talking. That's what she said. I was going to talk about... <laughs> I was going to talk about the top 20 countries that are mm. that have sweet addiction. Yeah. So you keep talking and I'm going to pull this up while you're... Okay. Yeah. So one of the things that as we've modified and changed foods, I don't know if you guys know this, but uh, typical processed chickens are now, uh, I don't know, four times bigger than mm -hmm. chickens from 50 years ago. Mm -hmm. And we found that if you take cancer-causing arsenic... Uh, which is poisonous, and you feed it to chickens, it'll make them bigger. And then they will grow bigger, and then you can sell them for more money at the grocery store. Yeah, because they're sold by weight. Yeah. So if yeah. you look at this, this is like a, a chickens from the 1950s till chickens now. And you can see the huge difference of those. 
And when I was uh, in my twenties, I was like, I'm gonna be eating healthy, right? So my view of eating healthy back when I was twenty, uh, which was just a couple of years ago, was <laughs> eating uh, chicken breast. That was how you become healthy, right? Drink lots of Dr. Pepper and just eat some chicken breast yeah. and pork and beans. Yeah. And I was gonna be super healthy. And so, pork and beans. Uh, I got, I get the fresh, oh. and I felt so like legit, like adult, you know. I'd go and get uh, cut fresh tenders, you know, and then take them home and like cook with them. And so I, I really felt like I was doing something special here. Um, but one of them had a golf ball sure sized tumor in there, right? And so I was, well, I didn't know it was a tumor, it was just this like round, greenish brown thing. And so I took it back to the butcher, because back then we had butchers. And um, I guess they do now, but you never yeah, see them. Yeah, no, they're just cutting up stuff for the And so package, packaging. I was like, dude, what the hell is this thing? And he goes, oh, that's just cancer. We see it all the time. It's no big deal. So he takes it back and he gives me all new meat. So that's pretty wow. good. Wow. So I never thought about this until I raised chickens. But they slaughter those chickens in five months. That means this butcher's like, oh, we see tumors this big within first five months of life by the way that we feed chickens a bunch of corn, mm -hmm. which is genetically modified, yeah, GMO. and arsenic, which causes cancer. So that's breast cancer, too. And we're just eating it up. Yeah. You know? Wow. And, and, and you didn't even think about it when he said, hey, I'm going to go get you some different meat. Right. It's just like, yeah. Give me the same the meat that you've been selling that also causes chickens to have breast cancer. Go ahead and hook me up with that. Yeah. That's a good idea. Yeah. Because that mentality is just like, well, everybody has cancer. Mm -hmm. Why wouldn't chickens have cancer? Like, that really was my mentality. It was like, well, yeah, if a chicken lives long enough, it's going to have cancer. Wow. Five months, it has a huge tumor. Wow. And so, when y'all clean your meat, so do you see, like, Thing. I see things sometimes I'm like take that out of there like just like a red dot or some kind oh, of yeah. I just probably blood clots probably yeah yeah and I'm, I'm getting to a point where I'm just not even sure I want to do that I've started like even removing the beak and the claws now because <laughs> they get stuck in my throat like right here <laughs> it's bad. is that what you're talking about yeah no? <laughs> oh, and you know what's funny is, so I raise chickens too, and all the chickens are like a Get pound him. and a half, and like, they're all normal, right? Right. They walk in the chicken coop, they all fly away, and I built this big chicken coop that you walk in, like 10 foot by 12 foot by 14 foot, it was awesome. But, we got these two other chickens from the fe uh, feed store, right? And those things became just ginormous chickens, right? Ooh. Like, all the chickens were normal. These two things would like, when you walked in, the rest of them would fly off. These two would like lumber back and forth and then fall down. And I was like, what the hell is wrong with these chickens, right? Wow. And so I ended up slaughtering them probably about five months old. They weighed 10 pounds. They were as big as a turkey and they were a chicken. Well, I mean, there are some breeds that just grow big. Does anybody Ten know? Pounds? That? I don't chickens know. don't grow the size of turkeys. Really? I mean, no, I thought I, don't think I so. have a friend who raised chickens, and some of his chickens look pretty big. But because he probably been, got those chickens, yeah, it's probably those kind of chickens. It could have been because it was a Cornish, uh, Cornish hen or something like that. Or, and they, we all know that those don't get very big. Yeah, it was um, some. And so, what we do to the food has dramatically changed, and so even like uh, trout. Trout should be this big. Now trout are like that big. They're mm -hmm. huge, right? Mm -hmm. Because the chemicals that we use to grow the chickens faster, we grow the ch those faster. We grow cows faster. We grow everything faster because the whole goal is to get it to mark fa uh, market faster mm -hmm. with that. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a book. The first talk that we had, we mm -hmm. read from my textbook from 1907, mm -hmm. uh, and basically said, you know. All these foods are toxic, don't eat these foods, so we're teaching kids not to do it. Now, it's like, it's celebrated. Like, literally, there's all these ads, if you guys see them on Facebook, but where it's just like, uh, we use lead in our <laughs> paint for <laughs> toys, and we use uh, lard for this, and we use corn for this, and like, oh, give the kids a little bit of Coke, 
you know, Baby's Coke. There's commercial or ads where back then it was there. It was valid. You gotta feed. You gotta feed them coke. Yeah. Right. Because yeah. that's obviously a good mm -hmm. idea. But <laughs> one of the things we came out with that like coke is, was is, actually in coke. That's right. In the very beginning, I think we talked about that. I don't know three yeah. times ago or something. Is cola nut and cocaine. Yep. That's why I love during COVID. They're like, if you're gonna st keep messing with coke, just go back to the cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> you know. So Wonder Bread Not comes me. out. Yep. Wonder Bread is taking whole grains and making it so processed that bugs won't eat it anymore, which we talked about last mm -hmm. time, right? Mm -hmm. But Wonder Bread, the way that we make bread, will get you 15 years in prison and half a million dollar fine in places like Singapore because the brominated flour, so when you see that word brome, mm -hmm. it actually interferes with the binding uh, receptors to iodine which then messes up your thyroid and it literally makes people sicker, fatter, and dumber. So in countries where they don't want sick, fat, dumb people, they don't do that. Mm -hmm. So that fluoridated stuff, chlorinated, uh, so chlorine, fluorine, or fluoride, uh, bromine, those literally make the populations dumb, fat, and sick. And the water is really fluoridated, in some cases. the water is chlorinated, and the bread is, mm. has brominated, and so it should make you horribly sick, fat, and dumb. Well, where was that? Lake Erie or something where they had all of that stuff in their water? Oh, what was that? That, that was huge. That right. killed a lot of people. Yeah. Um, Made a lot of people really sick. So, I, I can't remember if it was Lake Erie or if it was somewhere else. Well, there's a lot. Well, again, there's lots. It's you know, not it's just the only stream in town. That's I had sure. this patient that lived on a commune in the middle of Idaho, right? Totally separate. They did everything off the grid. Mm -hmm. Everybody got autoimmune stuff, MS, and cancer. And so it was like, wait, 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 wait. wait. How does all these people get cluster stuff in a commune? That doesn't make any sense mm -hmm. whatsoever. So, with like most of my patients, if I don't know, I'm going to do a bunch of research. Mm -hmm. So I looked up. The lake that fed into where they lived mm -hmm. and so that's what they drank out of bathed out of all the stuff and then I found an article from a paper in Idaho where they were voting on whether they were going to use this toxic spray to spray around the lake to kill the invasive species of algae that they have so we basically have created warmer climates so then all of a sudden uh, all these fertilizer pesticides are being leached into our lakes and they grow plants and algae too much and then it suffocates the fish so then it kills the lake mm -hmm. and so the solution is spray a toxic chemical that will then kill that uh, species yeah. and then um, hopefully <laughs> it'll be fine but then that became their source of water because they're cut off mm -hmm. was poisoned by the government to kill this species so we can keep using fossil fuels and create global warming and all this kind of mess and it's, it's and use fertilizer pesticides all this it's crazy mm -hmm. it's absolutely crazy because no one would suspect that and everybody everybody in that commune thinks it's some mysterious illness right but no one knows or didn't put it, it together it didn't make, make the process and you know some of the chemical companies um, will tell you that it's it's okay to use around children and animals. Oh yeah. Well, and tell me if this I, is I'm the... not sure 100% about any of that, so. Yeah. So like our, our GMO stuff, that's a good mm -hmm. example, like exactly what you're talking about. Yep. So in America, genetically modified stuff is safe. Stop questioning that and just eat your damn processed food, <laughs> yeah. right? But the chemical we use to make genetic, I mean, the whole reason to make ge genetically modified is we take DNA from other species, mm -hmm. mix it together, create a mm -hmm. seed that can uh, survive a chemical that will kill every other living species except for that seed. So Roundup, we know, is will kill mm -hmm. all these other species, but we share the same pathways as those species. Mm -hmm. So yeah. dicam, I think it's dicamide or di. You guys tell me what it is. Uh, dicamide. They just banned it. So the EPA just banned it for soybeans. But not because awesome. it was killing people, because we were cool with that. But that would have antigenic drift, or sorry, it would have a, a, a pesticide drift, and it'd go into suburbs, and it would kill their dog and cat and tree and flowers, and that, uh-uh. Mm -hmm. We're not gonna tolerate that. Mm -hmm. 
So the EPA banned it because it kills everything else. And then they said, well, you know, if you still have some on hand, go ahead and just finish it out. This is so toxic that we are going to ban it from use. But if you have some extra, go ahead and poison the American population. Finish it off. fine with that. Just use it up. Right. That's crazy. That is. That's absolutely so, crazy. And, and, you know, I... <clears throat> I uh, was, uh, at some point in my life, I built an off-grid um, solar home. Oh, I knew that. And it was out in the middle of nowhere, really, but it was, um, I tried to find a place that was not around farmers farming. Yeah. Yes. But it's impossible. Mm -hmm. No matter where you go, you want to try to get out into quiet. And um, so, at some point, there was a chicken farm. <laughs> Just about three miles away, and like if the wind was blowing just right. Oh yeah. Oh. Yeah. And they'd spread that manure all over, and it, it's just like an endless cycle. Yeah. And it goes into the ground, and if you don't farm it for five years, you can call it organic. Yeah, and that's and where that is amazing to me. That's like because that doesn't go away for I don't know how many hundreds of years. Oh yeah. There's lots of programs out now that will talk about how. Um, recycling and um, dumps, you know, public dumps and stuff like that are. Yeah, there was one. They tell you how long that stuff lasts. Like it takes a hundred years or something. I might be off my rocker, but it takes like either fifty or a hundred years for a diaper to decompose. Yeah, that's crazy. And then yeah. all that goes somewhere. It goes somewhere. It rains. It gets starts seeping yeah. into. Something. All that microplastics is a huge oh, issue. Yeah. 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 And all those chemicals because that diaper is made from petroleum. Mm -hmm. And so it becomes estrogenic and it's toxic to the baby, but it sits on then it goes into your groundwater. Yeah. Yeah. There was a, uh, on NPR one morning, uh, there was a, uh, a school that sent out a letter to parents and it said, there's no need to worry. The fire that's been going on for 10 years underneath the school is not anywhere close to the toxic waste. <laughs> and so it was just like, so all these parents were like, Okay. Wait, what's that? There's <laughs> oh. been a fire underground for 10 years, and it's because they built it on a dump. Mm -hmm. So they make a dump, they pile a bunch of uh, um, soil over it, and then they sell the land cheap to the school. But those chemicals, when they start to break down, they can actually self-ignite. Like if you put chlorine, yep. uh, if you pour oh. brake fluid on chlorine powder, it instantly becomes like a jet flame. Right. And so then, okay, so then they find out, A, uh, your school's built on a dump, which we didn't know. There's a fire that's been going on for 10 years underground, underneath where your kids are. And they also have toxic waste underneath the ground where your kids are. Like, all these parents were just like, what the hell's going on here? Yeah, well, and then, like, in Japan, um, there, half of Japan, or there's a big part of Japan... Um, what, what's what's the Fukushima? One? Nope, nor Nagasaki. Where all the planes come in? <laughs> Airport. <laughs> yeah. Airport. No, okay. but part no. of that area has been made land by oh, landfill. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and but they have um, they have two or three different locations where they actually take it and break it down, and they're trying to do um, do something with it that's not toxic. Yeah. And I probably should look up that well, sometime, but that is what other countries probably are doing more of. Uh, our country does not. We just dump it in a hole mm -hmm. and let it go, and there it is. We so have it. one question would be like, what? Um, and even even I know a lot of you guys watch this offline, but what are some of the um, mm -hmm. foods that you know that are banned in other countries? So. One of the uh, probably big categories for us. Okay, let me check. Are, no, they gotta look at. Okay, they you guess. all. Well, I want to know. They I want to know. Homework. Okay. Tell us the sugar ones. All right. Okay. So these are the top twenty countries. So think about which countries you think are in the top five, and then what do you think is the 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 bottom five? Okay. So you're so. <clears throat> what do you think the number one is? Let's start there. Well, we all know Anybody? that. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to read off, and you want to start with 10? 
do yeah, ten. Yeah, let's do, do ten. ten. Uh, India is the twentieth. Yeah, can you believe that they have the, the they're in twentieth place for having sweet addiction in their country? Okay, so number ten, Sweden. That but sounds we, like sweet. But of course. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but Sweden, they. You would expect them to have a sweet addiction because they have a lot of sweets there. I, I'll just tell but, you now, it's all the white countries. <laughs> it, is. it really is. Austria, number, um, oops, did I go so wrong wait, way? So wait, wait, wait. Oh, Sweden, though. Canada. Do you think of Sweden as a country number that 10. eats much sugar? Sweden? Yeah. I mean, they have all kinds of, uh, I don't know what, they, what about the Swiss chocolate and all of that? I mean, that. Swiss cheese. Swiss cheese. Okay, so Canada is number 10. Canada. Uh, Canada. Number 9, Finland. I don't think it no. finishes. So these countries aren't obese, though. No, but I wonder if it, a lot very, of it very has active. to do. Yeah, they're very active in, in nature and um, culture. They have a lot of cultural um, events and things. Yeah. Um, they dance a lot. That's a big thing. So, anyways, in Canada and then Canada, Finland. Canada, Finland. Number eight is Mexico. Ay, caramba. Hmm? Necesito más uh, si, sugar. Si. So, uh, wait, wait, now. Okay. That one is post NAFTA. So, that's a. So, basically, it's almost always the white countries because we're all, I don't know what, hell, eating a bunch of sugar all the damn time. But uh, <laughs> Mexico is that way post NAFTA. Yeah, so NAFTA, we basically uh, worked a deal to where they could uh, basically give up all their other farming and just do make a bunch of corn for Americans. And then they started making corn manufacturing, corn high fructose corn syrup, and then they had candy. And then they eventually just found out they could make a ton of money feeding themselves a bunch of the corn processed crap that we eat. And they have really good chocolate. They grow cocoa beans out there, cacao well, yeah. or whatever. Okay, number seven. United Kingdom. White people. It's all crackers. <laughs> all the saltine countries. Number six, Belgium. Crackers. And again, I think it's chocolate. You know, Belgium, it is chocolate. Belgium chocolate. Swiss chocolate. Finnish chocolate. Is Belgium. Finnish chocolate? I always finish the chocolate. Number five, Austria. Oh, no, I Australia. said Australia. Australia. It's Australia. <laughs> it's Australia. Ah, oh, throw a couple shrimp on the bottom, <laughs> yeah. mate. A couple yeah. shields and a six pack. <laughs> That's a piss. right. That's right. Yeah. Number four, Ireland. That's. That surprised me. Ireland. Like, yeah. They're always eating haggis and wearing itchy sweaters. They're very the Irish. Society. It says the Irish are one of the biggest sugar consumers in the world. That's number four. Ireland. But they're they're ranked number four. They're not. That's not number one. I know. Irish people. But they're just talking about sugar consumption. Yeah. Instead of sugar addiction. So the average American consumes 150 pounds of added sugar. I'm not sure how that compares to uh, the rest of those countries. Because they, they have these by grams. We don't know what grams are because we're Americans. Okay, so it says, okay, so we're still talking about oh, Ireland. No, no. Much of this place, much of this is placed on huge popularity of sugary sports drinks and juices oh, in Ireland. Coke. It's Coke. They're all drinking It, it Coke. says even more sugar than a can of Coke. What? What are they drinking? Juices and sports drinks. Oh, huh. Gatorade's killing them. <laughs> yeah, they just recently took out some junk out of Gatorade. So that's what it know? is. Okay, wait, wait. So then it's these countries, these European countries, mm -hmm. and they're goddamn zero. Yes. And they gotta play for like twelve hours or something. Mm -hmm. So then they're just sucking down Gatorades all day long. I read an article yeah. about that some time back about sports drinks in other countries. Like it's huge. Like we think we're, you know, we're like Coke drinkers in our country, but they're like, hmm. that's interesting. I'm gonna look that up next time. <gasps> is that wrong? Ah, uh, the silver medal goes to Germany, who is the Gem. biggest sugar consumer in Europe. Ooh, yeah, that the Germ well, the Germans, that's the number two. Europeans are always like, uh, Germany is the America of Europe. They're loud, obnoxious, and they eat too much. I kind of like Germans. Americans. So. You know what the saying is, right? Gosh, how does he know all of this stuff? Let's meet our What did he just say? I have no idea. Mm. 
Okay, number one. Ich bin ein Berlinen. <laughs> yeah. Can right. y'all guess? Give us a guess. <gasps> number one. Everybody that's watching, guess give who? us a guess who's number one. Hey, there's Donna. Hey, Donna. What's up, Donna? Did I miss? I miss some people here. Yeah, Donna, Melody. Hi, Melody. Kim. Kim. Sherry. Lisa. Greg. Lynette. Glad you're here. All right, so. Uh, Randy and Jim. Who, who do you guys think the number one is? So give us an answer, y'all. Mm -hmm. We'll give you we we'll give you some time to know. think about it. We'll start talking about another they topic and we'll come back to this because we're already 30 minutes in. All right. Okay. So one of the most processed uh, or the, the most toxic things that we do to our food is um, we basically take gasoline and we make it into colors and flavors and smells. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, okay, now they're saying, so Sherry's, yeah. Okay, Sherry. Adiva. 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 I'm yep. still waiting. It's Usa. No, they got it. Oh, yeah. America. Usa. It's America. Yeah. Let's see what they have to say for themselves. All right, let's see. United States of America, 126.4 grams per person. That's a lot. I don't know what that equals. What, what does that mean, though? Four grams I mean, is per a person, teaspoon. like at their lifetime. So it says there's no surprise here, as the land of processed foods, soda and candy, America takes out the top spot for sugar consumed per person per day. Yeah. The average American consumes a mind-boggling 126.4 grams of sugar a day. I think it's more than that. Well, okay, so that's added sugar. We are the fattest nation in the world, it says. Yeah. Take that. <laughs> Who's second? Germany. Germany was second. 102.9. Those socialists grams can't per... even get as fat as Americans. But what did they say Americans. about that? What? Um, they didn't say anything. It right? doesn't say why. They. What would a German say? It says 102.9. I don't know what they're eating. It doesn't say. They probably all feel guilty in. for what they did during the war. It doesn't give us I'm Trying to eat the fillings. <laughs> like, let's not talk uh, about it. Let's just eat. Let's just eat. Let's move along. All right. So, oh, gasoline. Great factoids. What? That was great factoids. Yes. Yeah. But I don't think we surprised anyone. I don't think so either. No. That's so sad. I mean, if they've done any paying attention to your show. You know the answer right? is always, always America. It's always going to be. It's always America. Our country. That's the answer is always America. It's kind of like at church. I'd always just be like, the answer is Jesus. Whatever they ask, just say Jesus. Yeah. And you got it. Yeah. So. Yeah. All right. So we have all these products in our food that we literally make from petroleum. So we take coal tar. And if we use coal tar in a lab. We can cause a hundred percent cancer rates. We can also then take that coal tar and make artificial yellow, blue, orange, all the artificial colors come from coal tar. Mm -hmm. And we know that they are banned in other countries and they decrease brain growth by 3,000 to 5,000 percent. They literally cause attention deficit, deficit disorder, ADD, mental and brain dysfunction, dyslexia, all that. So in 1975 to 1991, learning disorders went up 156%. So when I was a kid, I don't remember any dyslexia. I don't even think that was a thing. And then suddenly, everybody has dyslexia. Everybody has learning disorders. But it's more an Americanized thing because if our colors end up in other products in other countries, so most of them are banned, but if they go into them, they just put a warning label that says, this color is known to cause um, uh, attention deficit disorder and then parents can actually make decisions about what candy to give the kids. Do I want the candy that causes ADD or do I want the candy that doesn't cause ADD because mama wants to keep her um, sanity today. Oh wow. Y'all I just looked up ban banned foods in other countries. Oh, that's Do not the want same. Alright these, these are different. These are just horrible <laughs> horrible ideas for food. One is horse meat. All right, horse. Now go through the okay. list. Okay, okay, go through the whole list. So Yo. these are banned in other countries. I don't even know what this is. Haggis. 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 That's what the damn Irish or Scottish are doing. What is that? Oh, it's the Scottish it. always messing up everything. <laughs> so haggis other is like other banned foods. Just kind of weird. Haggis okay. is like haggis? Uh, internal organs ground up or something. Put okay. in intestines. Um, I don't know. Horse meat. 
horse meat. Oh my gosh, I have I haven't even ever thought you that that was. Horse meat. I'm, I'm back when I was a kid, and they were making. Uh, Wendy's got in trouble for serving kangaroo meat. I was like, I eat kangaroo meat. Well, they probably have that in Can't eat horses. other countries. There's a book. Carolyn Allen uh, posted this the other day. I want to get this book, but it's uh, why we're friends with dogs, wear cows. And eat pigs, mm -hmm. and so it's all this kind of delineation for that changes from country to country of what we actually do to these animals, whether we're friends with them, we wear them, we eat them, like we have all these different rules. So horses, uh, actually in Europe, That's if there's a, a, a picture, there's usually a statue or something of a horse head, mm -hmm. that means they serve horse meat. Just so you know. Wow. Uh, what, what else do they have? Okay, fugu. Which looks, oh wait, I'm going to go back to farm-raised salmon, but we're not surprised about that. Okay, so farm-raised salmon, the salmon that mm -hmm. most all Americans eat mm -hmm. is actually banned. Because they feed it corn. First of all, they feed it corn. Corn farm does not anything, have really. zeastoxanthin in there, which turns the meat pink and red. So when you right. cook crustaceans like lobster or shrimp, it literally becomes red because of the activation of the zeastoxanthin. Mm -hmm. So then when uh, salmon and tuna eat those, they turn their meat red. So when they started feeding, uh, uh, basically just making all these farm-raised um, uh, uh, salmon, they, uh, salmon, and, yeah, salmon, uh, the meat was turning white. So then they mm -hmm. took coal tar, which causes cancer, made red food coloring, which causes ADD, and then they uh, dyed the corn red and fed them that, and then the meat turned beautiful color again pretty but usually pretty you can pretty. tell because they have like white stripes in them but more importantly it's just it's a uh, wild caught yes yeah. and like only one ingredient or water or something so think about that next time you yeah. eat salmon that's farm raised <clears throat> and no it's banned in other countries you know there are farm raised things that are happening around the world in the country in our country um, like mussels and things like that up mm -hmm. in the northeast part of the country that they're actually doing farming on that but it's in fresh what they're what they're calling it's so close to the to the uh, yeah the ocean water or salt water that they can actually do that and then, I don't know mussels are in fresh water right mm -hmm. so they're like on that little border um, the uh, so. yeah so fugu Fugu. That's is, like puffer fish. That's isn't puffer it? fish. I ate fugu in Hong yeah. Kong, and uh -uh. I did not die. It's it's banned, but it says it's. Uh, let's see. Because it's it'll kill Australia you. Australia and New Zealand have banned this kind of. Oh, that's salmon. Sorry. Oh. Uh, fugu. Uh, yeah. Puffer fish is Japanese delicacy. Yeah. That's all but banned in the U.S. Mm-hmm. Um, it's so poisonous that the smallest mistake in its preparation could be fatal. Yeah. So I'm okay with that one. But I ate it and I survived. Oh my gosh, y'all. Genetically engineered papaya. Yeah. This is so awesome. I'm glad we're doing this. So GMOs are banned in a lot of countries because they disrupt the physiology of plants and bugs and we have that same physiology. Mm -hmm. What is um, this? I don't know. It looks like Salad? fruit. A key. A key? I think that's a fruit. Okay. A key? Is that a fruit? Uh, um, boiled and cooked with... S what in the world? A key is some kind of fruit. It's got to be a fruit because it's showing like bananas and that's not even watermelon. And we're... I don't, I'm not sure. Maybe they just couldn't find a picture of it. <laughs> Kasu? Kasu Marzu. Oh, that's cheese. Cheese. Why is it banned Marzu though? Marzu is made from... What kind of animal? Oh, it's the Kazu Marzu, a Sardinian cheese, is forbidden in the States. Producers make Kazu Marzu by introducing fly larva into pecorino, which is a hard cheese. Mm -hmm. um, the larva promote mm -hmm. advanced fermentation. Mm -hmm. That sounds like a terrible idea. Then they hatch and then they eat through the cheese. That's the idea is that cheese connoisseurs will eat the softened cheese before the maggots die. Stay with us, y'all. I know well, that's kind of creepy, go. but I mean that makes sense, right? Let's don't. I mean some, you know, yeah. aren't maggots? They're. I mean, it's good protein. 
Oh, caviar, y'all. Beluga caviar. Caviar. But that's because they're killing the, the mama fishes. Oh, that's a wildlife service thing. Yes, has yeah. banned imports of beluga caviar because same, beluga whales are considered. Same with shark fins. They're cutting them off, killing them. But what about frog gras? That's huge. Yeah. Um, Japan. And same France. thing. The World Wildlife Fund. Um, peop that comes from shark fins. Oh, that frog gras. Uh, frog frog oh, wait. gras. Oh uh, wait. Sorry. Goose liver. They have this all messed up. Where? Yeah. You got to find your little paragraph. So uh, fatty liver. Sorry. <laughs> so one time at a party, we were oh, having a uh, pate, pate de frog gras, and. Um, we were playing chess and doing all the stuff, and then uh, we we're gonna eat this um, frog gras. Or we had frog gras. Sorry. And we were running out. So I went to the kitchen at Amir's house, and I was going to uh, replace it with uh, Fancy Feast cat food. So it's oh. liver, so cat food smells oh. like liver. So I thought it was gonna be funny as hell to put this, <laughs> and it looks the same because it's in the same kind of can. <laughs> yeah. And I was going to put cat food. I remember this story. Yeah. And then uh, I think he came in the kitchen and just mm. chastised me about this. <laughs> oh, inappropriate to be doing that. What? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Y'all. What is that? My kid eats these. <gasps> Kinder eggs are banned. Why? A surprising addition to the list of banned foods in the United States are Kinder Surprise Chocolate Eggs. Why is that? These oh. Italian sweets feature a tiny toy hidden in the plastic capsule, but as per, <gasps> as Der Spiegel reports, law bans an edible odd. Oh, you know the Kinder, <laughs> the Kinder eggs now have the toy separate. They have it packaged separate. Yeah, they have it like yes. uh, like this, and you open that, and the and toys it's got here the down chocolate the chocolate on one there. side. Yeah, mm -hmm. but that's that was a little bit <gasps> surprising there for. And a second. then what I was talking about. Of course the law bans inedible objects I mean right right we don't want kids eating plastic toys we want them to eat petroleum. plastic everything else <laughs> so the number six thing on here is artificial colors and dyes because they're made from straight-up petroleum which is neurotoxic to your brain yeah. but most governments ban those around the world yep so they cause uh, brain tumors hyperactivity um, and nerve cell degeneration, deterioration, so like MS kind of stuff, neuropathies. And who would think that there are M&Ms or skills causing neuropathies? Like that's crazy. M&Ms. And why the hell would we use it in the first place? So the rest of the world gets a different M&M, a different Skittle. The Skittles in, in Europe are different than the Skittles in America because they don't allow those poisonous chemicals to be introduced because they don't want to deal with a bunch of brain tumors and hyperactive kids. So they just use natural colors. It makes sense, doesn't it? And it co the mess or up thing is it costs a tiny or... fraction more. Yeah. Tiny or... fraction. Just isn't that amazing. Yeah. Oh, good. Oh, and I was just bread? talking about this. With bromate. So brominated bread, which is why we said that you get tw 12 years or 15 years but in prison. But we need potassium. Not <laughs> bromate, though. No. Explain the difference between regular potassium and bromate potassium. No, no. So the potassium oh. is just, again, it it's just, no, no, no. It's just connected to the bromate. It's just a, like a carrier. Oh, okay. They, they, so it needs that. To... Yeah, so like calcium carbonate or calcium malate or calcium gluconate. It's just a way that you use to absorb that, that thing. Gotcha. So then they add potassium, which probably makes it more absorbable, but then that means you inter interfere with your thyroid even faster. Okay. Yeah. So let's see what it says uh, about potassium Ooh, and the same bromate. Thing. Brominated vegetable oil. Oxidizing agent yeah. called potassium bromate to bleach the bread dough. The addition of pas uh, potassium bromate yields soft, fluffy bread, but it can cause cancer in the thyroid kidneys if you consume kid and kidneys if you consume enough of it. Yeah. Some bakeries have stopped using it, but others, including those that make fast food buns, still use it. Potassium bromate is banned in Brazil, Canada, China, and Europe. China. The day China bans a food that America doesn't is crazy. That's like. Um, when the FDA voted that they were not going to ban uh, BPA or bisphenol A in baby uh, nipples, pacifiers, chew toys, which is horribly estrogenic, our FDA voted no. 
we weren't going to ban those. Walmart then stepped up and said, well, we're going to ban it in our stores. And that's BPA, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the same thing is like, oh my God, the day Walmart's protecting your children greater than the FDA, that's pretty messed up. Yeah. Think about that. That's huge. And then bromated vegetable oil, that's uh -huh. BVO in the ingredients. Look at the picture underneath it. The picture underneath it, y'all, is a picture of like some kind of juice or something. I don't know if y'all can see that or not. Yeah. Yep, there you go. So, so there's vegetable oil in your juices that are kind of like... So Mountain Dew, brominated, potato chips, kids cereal, crackers, um, a lot of those have BVO in there. And again, it makes you dumb, fat, and sick. So you have all these parents feeding their kids cereal because it says it's a part of a healthy diet. And then it has brominated vegetable oil, it has brominated flour in there. And then they're like, why, I can't figure out how to get my kid to look, be healthy. That's right. And why are they not doing well in school? And then they have learning disorders, they gain a bunch of weight. And it's just like, what mm -hmm. the hell's going on? But it's because we allow it. Number three, meat with ractopamine. Yeah, so what the hell's ractopamine? I don't know. I, I, I've actually <laughs> talked about this one, but I don't... I don't the name uh, ractopamine sounds just as scary as this chemical actually is. Um, this feed additive either accelerates weight gain or promotes leanness in animals depending on the dosage. Um, but researchers determined that the recto rectopamine might cause tachycardia so and really other cardiovas yeah, cardiovascular yeah. effects. So people's people. meat is causing arrhythmias, increased heart rates, all that kind of stuff. And so consequently, uh, ractam ractam Ractopamine. That's a good word. Has, it is. Yeah. That Ractopamine. We should just, <laughs> we yeah, should just a, say yeah. that randomly. Uh, we're out doing some. Hey, pover, ractopamine. Say, povera mabine malare. Because of the ractopamine. Uh, ractopamine. Si. I don't know. Okay, so uh, it has been banned in China, Europe, it's Russia, banned. and Taiwan. China and Russia bans this from their meat, but America does not. You know, how many of you have ever experienced like arrhythmia or some palpitation or Ooh, something? Every time I, I have a lot of them. Every time I fall years. in love, <laughs> my heart skips a little beat. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So watch out, ladies. So what about you then? Yeah, I've just experienced. Why it. are you just limited to ladies? <laughs> no, <it's... laughs> I don't know. Go Brad on. Pitt might be out there, you know, like... Now, Brad... Yeah. 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 Gotcha. Yeah. I'd be prison gay for Brad Pitt. This is this is going to blow your mind. This is number two. This is something I've been talking oh, about on this show for yes. ever. Yes. I recently told somebody the other... The, I don't know. It was a couple weeks ago. They said, oh, I have to have milk, like, every day, like, all day. And I was like, well, maybe you would feel better if you just stopped drinking that milk. Mm-hmm. Uh, any, oh, I gave it away, didn't I? Number two. It's milk. It's milk. 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 And it's all the growth hormone, the bovine, all of that stuff. And not even just no. the stuff we're adding, but also the naturally occurring uh, bovine growth hormone that's in there, inside growth factor, and the estradiol that's in there. The FDA approved recombinant bovine growth hormone, or RBH, yeah. which I said a couple weeks or three weeks ago that you can get RBHT free cheese at mm. Sprouts, Sprouts for actually a pretty good price. It's tasty. I like to leave it out on the counter a little longer um, to warm mm. it up so that it gets more flavor in it. Well, aren't you so Ooh. fancy? RBHT. This is my favorite one. Has a little effect. Okay. Olean. You know what that is? Olean. This, this is the one that caused people huge. to poop their pants. So you get too much of these chips in you, and you have digestive issues. So on Not the kidding. on the package when these came out, they were like, um, these have no fat in them because they have this olein in there, right? And or reduced fat or whatever. And then on the on the warning label, so they have warning labels on your potato chips that said may cause sudden anal leakage. <laughs> I did read that. Oh my God. 
Like, where are we at in America? Let's, let's eat it all up. That we're just like, you let's know what? Do it. Give me the poop my pants chips because <laughs> I can't control my diet. Like, it's sugar that makes people fat, not fat anyways, right? Right. The countries that eat the most fat are the skinniest. But what do we do? Well, old fat makes you fat, so let's put this chemical in there that makes you crap your pants every time. You no like, wonder you're not going to get fat. Yeah. <laughs> you're not going to have anything in your digestive tract. And it's also the ingredient in Ally, which is still approved, and Ally's box suggests that you bring an extra change of clothes to work, and you should probably wear darker clothes like black pants. Oh, yeah, you know? Right. So when you shit yourself, your coworkers don't know. <laughs> they're gonna know. Especially if there's corn. <laughs> You're all like well into the bathroom. I'm thinking more just like, like the corn smell. Falling out. Because when you eat that stuff, I want yeah. to talk about digestion a little Ooh. tiny bit here. Once we're now that we're on this topic. Do it. So, lots of people will say, you know, uh, uh, there's lots of odor when they have uh, BMs or whatever. Well, if you have chemicals inside your body, you're gonna know by the yeah. the actual smell yeah. of your BM. So. Um, so you know yeah, it's funny. Just don't eat the chemicals. So like people are always like, oh, what kind of underarm deodorant? Like I don't ever use any, right? I don't either. When I ate crap, back in the day, I had I reeked, man. Mm -hmm. When I worked out, it Body stunk, huge. right? Mm -hmm. My poop stunk, my armpits stunk, and then my feet stunk. And <laughs> Aren't you having a day tonight? Shut it down. <laughs> shut it. Let's 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 change That's... the topic. <laughs> But, but, the, now, that's, but now, but now, now I, I don't. I can't even. Now I don't. I mean, right. So I, I haven't wore the, like deodorant in like probably ten years. Right. Because when I sweat now, it's very clean, mm -hmm. and I don't smell anything. And that's what we're supposed to be doing. But. But we can't have any like sweat marks under our shirts or anything. Oh my gosh! If the, that happened. <sighs> the last couple of days. Uh huh. I started eating like chips, but I mean they're fine chips. They're not bad chips. But I haven't really, I didn't cook or anything. I've just been like, I went, I did a two week mm -hmm. fast and then I went hiking and then I went hiking again and then I went climbing and I broke mm -hmm. my toe and then I rock climb and I would go to the gym every day. And so I was just like for two days or two or three days, I was just like, I don't care. I just eat chips and some hummus and eat chips and some salsa. And mm -hmm. that's all I cared about, right? right. I, didn't, I, didn't, I wasn't really eating much of anything else. And then this morning I went to the gym and worked out and my armpits, I was just like, Whoa, do I stink? Oh well, no, that was last week. But that's because that was last week, ladies. I was eating, <laughs> but that's because I was eating crap. I mean, it wasn't even that bad of crap, but it was crap. So, yeah, that's one of the things is as you learn this stuff, and I want to hear about what you guys have to say too. Like any foods, ingredients that you guys know that are banned, or any of the changes that you guys made too. Let us know because we're all on the same journey together. None of us are perfect. It's always process over perfection because you keep learning how awful everything is. But there's still really good, awesome, healthy, inexpensive ways to be healthy. Um, hey, Gina, um, tell me, what, what kind of capsules are you talking about that are hard to open? I think we kind of uh, were either behind. Astronaut you. capsules? When That's came out, I was a teenager, and we were having competitions and who would... <laughs> Shit themselves first. Nice. Oh, wow. So, like, oh, well, yeah, because, you know, my sisters and my mom, back in the 80s, that laxatives was the weight loss solution back then. Oh, my gosh, so many women were addicted to laxatives. Drink Diet then. Coke, eat rice cakes, and take laxatives and Dexatrim. <laughs> that was, like, the solution. Is everything. Dexatrim still out there? I don't know. I might do some Dexatrim. I, like, grind that up. Just oh, okay. The Kinder Egg capsules. They are hard to open. Oh. Kinder Egg it has in... The Kinder Egg is hard to open. The Kinder Eggs are hard to open? <laughs> I don't know if that sounds right. All right. You did a pretty good job. We're sh we're really into, like, worldly accents here. Jack so. We're jacking around. Right. We're Kinder trying to egg. offend every country. We're sick and tired of offending just Americans. Look what time it is I already. Y'all, so we didn't fast. even get to... Let's remind everyone that if you share the show today, um, yeah. share the show today, uh, we'll go back and double check.
to see who did and then we're gonna put your name in a hat and then next show um, next Tuesday seven o'clock same time we're gonna draw a name out of the hat so that we can um, get you connected with dr. Garrett if you have questions or yeah. need check your blood work whatever yep Whatever happens. Review. Thanks for doing that. Yes. I kind of nudged him a little bit last time. I, I think I might have put him on the spot of hair. That's good though. But all yeah, right, let's do it. So next Tuesday, we're gonna probably uh, wrap this up with this part, yeah. and then we're gonna finish out our five things and talk about the rest of it. But again, uh, thank you guys for joining us. I really yeah. appreciate it. Um, and then we'll see you guys next Tuesday. And thank you, Suzanne, for gracing us with your presence and helping out oh being a part of this i didn't get to talk about energy that's next, next time week. yeah y'all um ac or dc energy. private message me if you want to uh get in touch with somebody i know who i'm working with named lizzie who uh, does energy body work lizzie borden lizzie burke borden and she's on facebook so it's borden um yeah is you know it? who Lizzie Borden is? I don't know who Lizzie Borden is. She like chopped up her family. Okay, well she's... That's bad energy. What? Work. Don't bring that up. That's bad energy. That's no, bad no. mojo. All right. So anyway, uh, we'll talk a little bit about that next week along with some of this stuff because what, it, what I'm wanting to talk about is how even this food, all of this junk that we just talked about today affects that too. Yeah. All right, you guys. Thank you for joining. Ah. See you guys next week.